Hi, I'm Ryan and welcome back to the shop. In this episode, I'm going to be continuing to work on my letterpress project. In particular, I'm going to be focusing this time on the drivetrain. At the end of the last episode, I moved the mechanism I had made around, and I talked about how it still had a lot of play in it because of these foam pieces. Now, these are from the letterpress prototype. I stole them off of there just so I'd have something to crank the mechanism back and forth before I was done with it. But it's time to replace them with something real. So, in this episode, I'm going to replace both of those with chunks of steel. On the first side, I'm also going to put gear teeth around one of these pieces, and make a matching pinion that aligns with it. On the other side, I'm going to have just a metal disc with a hole in it that just cranks the mechanism around. By the end, I'm hoping I can turn one shaft and have the whole mechanism move back and forth. Let's get started. All these parts are going to be made from 3 quarter inch steel plate. I'll start with the bigger piece. My first task is to mark out an 8 inch circle. I'll begin by finding its center. Before drawing the circle's perimeter, I'm going to mark and drill its center hole. This will give me a feature I can indicate against later. To draw the perimeter of the circle, I'll use a tool I built a few years back, a beam compass. I actually made a video about it. I'll put a link on screen and in the description if you're curious. But anyway, it has two ends, a pointer and a place to put a marker. I'll position the marker by eye. I'm only looking for an approximate circle at this point, and trace the part's perimeter. Now, I'll rough cut the circles on the bandsaw. I had quite a hard time getting the cut started. It seemed like the outside of the steel was covered in some sort of super hard oxidation or something. I ended up instead drilling some holes near the edge that allowed a bandsaw blade access to the inside of the part, unoxidized metal. This went much better. As I was cutting, my blade seemed really dull. So I replaced it and inspected the old blade. Look at what that hard oxidation stuff did to the teeth. Wow. Anyway, with my technique figured out, the rest went pretty smoothly. From one of the offcuts, I'll trace out a smaller, approximately two inch circle. This is going to become the smaller gear. And finally, I'll turn this last piece of steel into the wheel for the other side. Just like the other wheel, I'll bore a hole down the middle. And I'll roughly cut out the circle's perimeter. Here's all the circle blanks, ready to be turned into circles. To convert the blanks into circles, I'll use my rotary table. This is where I ran into some trouble. How was I going to clamp this big circle blank to the small rotary table? I bolted some 1, 2, 3 blocks to the rotary table, giving it outriggers that were larger in diameter than my piece. Another important thing to consider, I had very little clearance underneath of the blocks. Luckily, my 1, 2, 3 blocks have some threaded holes in them. To finish the setup, I needed to coaxially center the circle on the rotary table. This is where that quarter inch hole I bored earlier comes in. I grabbed a quarter inch collet for my mill and a quarter inch end mill. Carefully, I put the end mill into the collet backwards. I could now install this into my mill and position the hole in the piece coaxially with the mill head. I checked afterwards and there was less than a thou of run out across the circumference. That's good enough for me. Now that I've got the part positioned, I'm going to bore the inside hole to its final diameter. I need to now round the outside of the circle blank, and to do that I'm going to use the shell mill.
now I'll drill the hole so I can attach this piece to the side link. Okay, so here's the first disc roughed into size. Now, the next step is I need to somehow carve gear teeth around the outside of this disc. And going into this project, I really didn't know how I was going to do that. So, like I normally do, I did some research online. And in the process, I came across a video that was put out by this old Tony. Now, if you don't know who this old Tony is, you definitely should look him up. Consider subscribing to what he does. He's really, really a funny machinist. But he did a great video on making your own gears. And the way he did it, and the way I'm going to do it, is using what's called a gear cutter. So this gear cutter looks kind of like a saw blade, but it's got a special profile that corresponds to the gear that I'm going to be cutting. In addition to the gear cutter, I'm going to be using what's called a dividing head. Basically, think of it like a more precise and repeatable version of the rotary table I used earlier in this project. Now, to attach this thing to the dividing head, I need to somehow utilize the hole that's down the middle. On my dividing head, I have a three-jaw chuck and no other fixtures to work with. So we need a sort of pin that I can stick in the three-jaw chuck. There isn't really a feature like that on this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a pin. I'm going to make a little arbor that sits inside of this hole in the middle of this piece. And that arbor I'll index into the dividing head, and then I'll clamp that arbor to this piece. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, I think it'll make more sense once you see it in action. I'll begin by turning the diameter of this metal piece. I need to make it perfectly round. I'll put a step on the end. This will slot into the hole at the center of each gear blank. It's very important that the blank not wobble on this arbor. To try to reduce the risk of that happening, I'm going to put a slight backwards angle on the base of this arbor. The way I see it, the gear blank will only sit on the circular edge and therefore should not wobble. And a test confirms my theory. No wobbling. Now, I'll drill a hole in the end that I'll use to hold the gear blank onto the arbor. I'll tap the hole for a bolt. Let me check how well I did. The needle on the indicator doesn't move. I might have gotten a bit lucky when I put this arbor into the three-jaw chuck, but still, very nice. Now I need to make the piece that I'll use to anchor the gear to the arbor. Again, just like the arbor, I'm going to put a taper on the inner face of this piece. And this is how it fits. The gear blank will be clamped in between these two pieces. Okay, let's cut some gears. First, I'll attach the dividing head to the mill and load in a gear blank using the arbor I made. The magic of a dividing head is it lets me equally space features around a part to a very high degree of precision. All of its precision comes from these plates. On top of the plate sits what's called the sector arm. The pointer sits on top of that. To make 95 divisions around a circle, the number of teeth in the big gear, I need to move 8 holes per tooth in the 19 hole line. 
Anyway, let me install the gear cutter on the machine, and I can show it in action. I also had to cut the pinion. The process was very similar, only on a smaller scale. To finish up the final wheel blank, I'll drill out its center and make it round. This one doesn't need gear teeth. Since this piece is smaller, I'll do this one on the lathe. Now that both gears are fabricated, I need to mount them on the letter press. The big gear is easy, that's going to go where the old foam version went. The pinion though, that's harder. Now, even though these are involute gears, I still want to give myself the ability to adjust how deeply they mesh with each other. Without this adjustment, my fear is that I'll get the two gear centers too far apart or too close together. And well, giving oneself more options is never a bad thing. So I'm going to make an eccentric spacer to give myself this adjustment. An eccentric part has a hole off-center. Because it's off-center, I'll be able to change the distance between the pinion and the big gear by rotating it. The eccentric pieces start life as some 2-inch steel round. After squaring the ends, I'll mark out the features. The outer two holes need to be enlarged and tapped. The inner offset hole will become the eccentric center bore. Now, I'll split the piece in half. Each half will become a separate eccentric piece. On the lathe, I'll square the end and then turn a shoulder on the side of the piece. Finally, I'll enlarge the offset hole to make a pocket for a radial bearing. And here's the final set of eccentric pieces. But we're not done. These pieces need to fit into the frame. So I'll bore a pair of holes for them to register into. Okay, now we're done. Let's put everything we made in this episode together. Very nice. The mechanism seems to all be moving correctly. Overall, I think these pieces came out okay. This was my first time ever cutting gears. If I had to pick one thing, I think that's the part that I'm still not quite satisfied with. Before the next episode, I'm going to see if I can tweak the gear profile to hopefully result in a smoother running mechanism. What do you think? What would you have done differently? Let me know in the comments below. I'm no expert, and I always love hearing about new techniques or better ways of doing things. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.